You guys notice in travel videos that they always start with a montage of airplanes and the airport. But you guys know what airplanes look like, right? So let's skip all that. We're in Iceland. but we got a last minute invite to come to Iceland to drive minis. Naturally, we said yes. So they've got four minis here for us to choose from and we're gonna take them on some little adventures around Iceland. Would you call them mini adventures? I would not, I'm not a cheap marketing <laughs> hack. And at the end, we'll each choose a favorite mini. So my good friend Zach Clatman from The Smoking Tires mentioned that there's a crashed airplane on a black sand beach nearby. Uh, we have a mini convertible and some horses in the background, so we're going to go check out that uh, airplane crash. That's better. Yeah. So one thing I really love about Iceland is that this kind of stuff is right off of the main road, the ring road. One thing I don't like about here, the enormous spiders. Driving around in this John Cooper Works convertible, a few things jump out to me. The first is, let's see, I'm in fifth gear here, torque. When I floor it, even in a higher gear, it really comes on strong. So uh, one of the things that's nice about it, the John Cooper Works is the more powerful one. What's great about the convertible in Iceland specifically is that everywhere you go, there's something gorgeous to look at and you can actually see it. Looking at waterfalls as you drive by, it's wonderful. The only downside is that it's not as family friendly as some of the other vehicles because you lose a bit of rear passenger space and you lose a little bit of cargo space. Yeah, they've tried to be clever with the cargo area so you can lift the back of the convertible top off, up to like put stuff in a little bit more easily um, and you can fold the seats down. But yeah, this would be tricky if we had our kiddo with us. One other thing I'm noticing too, I really like that this is a manual transmission. I thought, well, the shifter seems kind of long, but with the armrest here, it makes sense oh. to have such a long shifter. So that works really well. However, the John Cooper Works convertible is one of the cars where in America, you cannot get a manual transmission. Oh. So we're driving forbidden fruit and loving it. I did have one issue, which was setting up Apple CarPlay in here. It took me quite a few laps to realize that I had to connect via Bluetooth first and then connect Apple CarPlay. So that was a little befuddling, but eventually I got it. And I'm glad I did because I'm not sure where I'm going. <laughs> So over our shoulders is a Douglas DC-3 that crashed here in 1971. Some people say it was a mechanical failure. I read something that said that the um, pilot may have just selected the wrong fuel tank. Either way, that fateful <laughs> flight back in those days led to this moment 50 years later where Instagrammers can take their picture in front of the wreckage. Thank you for your sacrifice, brave pilots. They're not dead, right? The, oh yeah, they didn't die. No, <laughs> no, no, everybody was okay. The wreckage looks terrible, but with the optical clarity of flying eye sunglasses, it looks a little bit better. Flying eyes, look at that wreckage. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird endorsement. I 
I really thought it was cool to see the crashed DC-3. What did Sweetie think? It was fine. We're at the uh, San Bernardino airport all the time, so if I want to look at decrepit aircraft... Yeah, but none of those aircraft got there because the pilot forgot to switch the fuel tank. That's true. All right, I think we had a pretty good time driving the Mini Cooper convertible. Let's move on to the Mini GP. Now this is an exciting one. This is the Mini Cooper John Cooper Works GP. The reason why it's special, sweetie, they only made 3,000 of them, but um, it's very, very fast. I have a question. Yes. What the f happened to the back seat? You don't need people. All you need is the car. The car is everything. So uh, yeah, they took the seats out so they could put that crossbar back there. This is the raciest, sportiest, most extreme version of Mini Cooper. And we have many miles of dirt road until we get between where we're staying and the nearest paved road. And also, I'll tell you that the roads here in Iceland are largely straight. So this may not be the best environment. But let's endure a very slow, bouncy drive for the next many minutes. <laughs> Hooray! Something like pavement. We made it. Let's see what the GP does with a standing start. Three, two, one, floored and we. <laughs> so traction seems to be the limiting factor. <laughs> Whoa. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, you get these little tugs back and forth, but it's not the big torque steer experience that I've had in some powerful front drive cars. One of the challenges in Iceland is that um, my understanding is they are very strict about speed limits, so I'll be mindful of that. Yes. Let's put it in manual mode and use these paddle shifters down to second. And let's see what happens when I floored in second from 50 kilometers an hour, floored. curve. <laughs> Let's see what turning feels like. Yeah, yeah, we're turning. <laughs> and it passed. Just a little, not Just too little. much. Yeah, not too much turning. <laughs> Everything I read said that the uh, suspension is like very firm, almost brutally firm. Uh, it doesn't feel brutally firm to me. I think if we uh, did this for a good long while, maybe a long stretch all the way around the, uh, the island of Iceland, then maybe this would be a little bit more fatiguing. It is, uh, the noise maybe would be a little bit more of a problem. And for no reason, let me floor it again. That's good. And this is how we'll end up extending our stay in Iceland. Oh no. Free room and board. <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> So are you going to go into detail about the infotainment? No. <laughs> My sense driving the Mini GP is that I really, really like the power, but it's very high strung. Uh, this is pretty firm. Uh, to me, it really feels like uh, it's meant to be at a racetrack, and I don't know if Iceland has any, and we certainly don't have time to go find it out. So yeah, maybe we'll just wrap it up. But you know, first, you need to drive the GP. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions other than don't crash this rare mini? Uh, as once stated on a bumper sticker, get in, shut up, and hang on. <laughs> Except that normally applies to the passenger, so. I guess that's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, nice and smooth. This steering wheel feels beefy. It's a beefy steering wheel. Can you handle it? I don't know. There's just so much of it. Okay. We got a straightaway, and um, it's pretty quiet here in Iceland. Not a lot of traffic. What's my top speed? Um, when I start screaming. Go ahead and okay. stop. Brakes feel good, huh? They well, do. <laughs> all right, sweetie, floor it. Wow. <laughs> I think what's happening there is that there's a lot of electronic intervention to try and manage the amount of power that's getting to the ground. But from your perspective, how did it feel? Um, it felt like I had to be more um, precise with how I aimed the steering wheel than I normally do. Oh, we're going through the one corner. Ooh. How's that steering feel? Feels firm. It does like feel it. firm. Yeah, yeah. The, the steering weight is pretty heavy, very precise. Feels like the kind of thing you might want to use on a racetrack, but not necessarily on a back road in Iceland. <laughs> Look out, horses. Sweetie's about to floor it. <laughs> you think you know horsepower? 
Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Quick, distract me with full throttle acceleration. Go, go, go. Yeah. What do you think? Is that fun? That is fun. I don't know if it's because it's a small car that has nice tight steering. I, I don't feel as out of control as I do in some other cars when I go very fast. Then you're not going fast enough. Probably. <laughs> All right, you've had the experience. Sweetie drove a GP and did not break one of the 3,000 they made. Yay, we drove the GP. It's super rare. This is probably not the right environment to try to enjoy it, but I'm glad we drove it, albeit briefly. Onward to more minis. Okay, we're in the Mini Countryman and we're gonna head over to a place called Thingveller National Park. I don't know what's there, but I believe it's good enough to be a national park. We made it to Thingerville National Forest. That can't be it. That can't be right. <laughs> it is beautiful here. It's Gorgeous. Do you wish we were taking advantage of that rooftop tent that we brought? I do. I also wish we were taking advantage of some sort of bug spray because the bugs here are aggressive. It's crazy. This is a very different version of Iceland. How do you like this one versus uh, what we saw yesterday at the beach? I love it. It's so stark yet green. It's beautiful. Yeah, rugged, vivid. Iceland. That is an undeniably beautiful waterfall, but it looked bigger in the drone footage. I'm like, Aww. oh, that's it. Oh, hey, little guy. <laughs> Coming out of the Mini GP into the Countryman, this thing feels so luxurious. I was thinking the same thing between the seats with their sweet leather stitching and all this room. And I was thinking about the ride quality too, because um, you know the roads here in Iceland, there's a lot of dirt roads and potholes, damage from cold, cold conditions. And this thing rides really, really well, but I don't think it loses um, the kind of joyful spirit of Mini. Although I will say I do miss the GP's power when I floor it. I mean, this is plenty quick, but that GP, man, that was fast. That was really fast. We wouldn't talk about it in most of the other Minis, but let's talk about family friendliness. Uh, what do you think about the Countryman? I think it is the most family friendly. That back seat, you could put actual full-size humans in and they would be okay. And I think the cargo space is really good too. It's 17.6 cubic feet. Yeah, I think it's really nicely set up for a small family and still kind of fun. There's a pretty solid emotion factor there as well. I do like the steering, especially on center. It feels pretty well locked in and it doesn't take much of a degree change in the steering wheel to get that turn to happen. So it does have a nice sporting feel. One thing you guys are probably wondering about, uh, the rooftop tent, here's how that works. Honestly, when I saw the rooftop tent on the Countryman, I thought it's sort of a goofball gimmick, but knowing how much room there is, if we had enough time in country to actually hang out, I would totally pop that rooftop tent up uh, next to the uh, side of this lake. That would make sure that the, uh, the sides are closed, because good God, the insects are intense. Okay, you guys can't see it, but we just passed <laughs> a bunch of people on horses and they all had head nets. Oh, that, we need head nets. Oh, dang. Now here is one shortcoming of the Mini Cooper Countryman. Uh, we're being guided by the navigation to go this way. The road is closed. Oh, oh. No. This German plated Mini didn't know what the Icelandic people had in store for us. No <laughs> driving this way. Back we go. This might be a reflection of my age, but um, personally, I'm really drawn to the combination of joyful driving and pragmatism. I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't want to admit it. Remember when you drove the S2000 with the four-point harness all the time? <laughs> that was a different Micah. <laughs> all right, we've achieved positive vibes with the Countryman. Onward to our last car, the Mini Clubman. We 
we've seen a lot of spectacular waterfalls while we're here, but now we're supposed to go see one that's even more spectacular somehow. There's 18 hours of sunlight, but we're shooting so much, we're almost about to run out. <laughs> Onward to Goldfoss. In what we're discovering is very typical Icelandic fashion. We're on our way to Gullfoss, and we just happened to stumble across Geyser, which is a geothermic spot. Kind of reminds me of Yellowstone or something, but um, happenstance has led us here, and it looks pretty awesome. by far the most suggestive geyser I've ever been to. <laughs> We've made it to Gullfoss. Let's see what it looks like. Will it be as suggestive as our last stop? Nothing could be as suggestive as our last stop. <laughs> Clubman is kind of interesting because it kind of splits the difference between the Countryman and the standard Mini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... You sounded like the Pillsbury Doughboy when you did that. <laughs> Stop poking me in the belly. <laughs> I really like that it still has the round headlights. The um, Countryman looks a little mean. Yeah, a li little angry. Yeah. yeah. Li little intense, bro. So this has the cuteness of a Mini, um, but a lot of the functionality that you'd find in the Countryman. Yeah, so it has more passenger space, a little more cargo room, and the way you access the cargo is different as well. It has barn doors on the back instead of your standard hatch. And I actually like the barn doors since they're half doors. They don't swing out that far, and you don't have a hatch coming up, so you don't have to step back when it lifts up. It's actually pretty convenient. I sort of dig barn doors. And it's super cute. And it's super cute. This reminds me a lot of your first Mini, so there's a big nostalgia factor here for me. I'd say that driving around the Clubman is um, maybe a little bit more enjoyable, a little smaller, a little bit more agile than the Countryman, but not so small that we couldn't fit a family of three in here. Oh, and as a side benefit, it's got a little less weight than a Countryman, so it's a little bit snappier when you floor it. Woo! One other big reason people go with the Countryman is because it has all-wheel drive, but the Clubman also has all-wheel drive, or at least it's an option. Funk. The visibility seems great in this one too. Those huge windows going all the way back. Yeah, I would say that if you want the most windows per dollar, the uh, <laughs> Clubman is the best choice. You've got so many windows back there. So what did you think of our journey uh, driving around in the Clubman? This was a good day. The awesome thing about driving around here is things are so easily accessible from the road. Just a short jaunt to a very suggestive geyser. <laughs> <laughs> a casual walk to one of the most spectacular waterfalls I've ever seen in person. This was a good day. I think this drive in particular I liked a lot because I didn't expect it to be so rich and green and verdant. Yeah. Um, it's so um, vibrant here and that was a surprise. I'm used to the um, other stark kind of uh, harsh environments and seeing this like lush countryside is really cool. All right, we've driven four minis. We had four mini adventures. Again, that's not cheap wordplay, but I keep falling into it. Cue the wardrobe change. All right, sweetie, it was a whirlwind trip in Iceland. What was your favorite mini? I'm going to have to go with the Clubman. Ooh. I thought it was going to be the Countryman because it's the biggest one and it had the most room for our gear and potential passengers, but the headlights in it are a little different than the other minis. And they're a little mean looking and I prefer the cute side of mini. I also really liked the way the doors opened and there were um, ample cup holders. <laughs> Nothing to do with the way it drove. 
<laughs> I like the Mini Convertible um, because it drove like a Mini, although there are a lot of bugs here and that convertible does let them in, but there's also a lot of mm. scenery here and that let in a lot of scenery. That was such a fun car to drive in a place like Iceland. And also, uh, since this was a bit of a couple's trip, Ooh, the fact that we true. could not have really <laughs> too many more passengers uh, made it a little bit more intimate. What about adventures? Which drive did you like the best? I enjoyed the drive to the geyser. It was uh, enjoyable to watch. <laughs> I liked the uh, drive out to the DC-3, um, if only because it was an interesting part of history, none of the occupants died, and uh, it's so stark, that kind of um, abandoned, desolate, um, inhospitable part of Iceland, I think is particularly intriguing. Overall, what do you think? Minis in Iceland? Great idea. Was it a great idea to do this kind of video? I know this is sort of half travel vlog, half car review thing. Would you guys watch more of these videos? If you liked it, tell us in the comments. If you hated it, you can tell us in the comments too. <laughs> we, we're open to it. It's hard to tell cultural nuances, but as far as I'm aware, high fives are acceptable in Iceland. Up top, and you too. Come get your high five. Ah! It's funny, I thought coming to a land with 18 hours of sunshine would be a great brand opportunity for Flying Eyes sunglasses, and yet this is the first day we've actually seen the sun. Flying Eyes, what is that bright orb in the sky?